there, there we go. Looking back. There you go. 
And then when you can, everybody right here, all, all eyes are upon us right here. Hey, straight ahead. Press me a little bit. Okay. Cope right here. And one last one right here. And looking straight ahead, with and without the glasses. There you go. Hold on one second. Okay, there. And one more time.
And then Kelly, straight on when you get a chance. Right in front of you. Right here when you can. Kyle, one more time on your left. Kelly, Kelly, right in front of you. Kyle, look at you. You look a bit bloody. And just clap when you can. That's it, you got it. Yes. And a couple more, look at this way. Give, give, right. give, give me something. And a couple steps this way. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. And right here. And Thomas, that's great. Thomas, chin down. There you go. And then right next to her, Thomas. Hold that small. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so here we go. And then just hands it. There we go. There's one baby step, and don't push them all the way there. Do it. I don't have to. Step forward. Step forward. Yeah, yeah. Step forward. Nancy. Can we just kind of turn this way a little bit? Turn a little bit. Right. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. I missed you, I missed you. Give me a wave, my ear, yeah. give me a wave. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Looking straight ahead, please, right here. One last time. And then just face me straight on if you could. One more. Yes, but he plays with all the ball. And you might what this expands <clears throat> is terror and violence and it feels very next level to me what they've done. Uh, it's a sequel in the middle of a trilogy, and so it feels like there has to be, it has to be pretty loud and pretty bold and brazen and new. And I think what David's done is really inventive, and I think the audiences will agree. It's nutty. Let's say you're in a hospital bed, a serial killer's on the loose. You can get one person from the cast and crew to keep you safe. Who do you ask to keep you safe? Jamie Lee Curtis. That's what everyone said! Yes! I would choose her. That is the answer! That, that is, is the answer. answer. There, it's oh on my God. tombstone. She was the answer. There you go, I'm done. I can order it tomorrow. It's so true. I know, in case, you know, weirdo back there shows up and is like, no, he has nothing on me, but he could get something into me, and then it's sort of curt and then it's curtains. <laughs> oh, it's an allegory for a lot of things. It's a, it's very much a story of our times. It's about people not listening. It's a little bit about misinformation. It's a lot about rage and trauma, rage and trauma colliding, um, and. It's exciting, and I think people are going to love it in there. And it's obviously big theater, a lot of people, be really fun. Oh, there's a kill in this movie that just, just is so brutal. I think they will be shocked, and for those who like this, uh, delighted. I don't, I don't understand why people like Escape of Scares, and yet I've, it's given me my entire creative life. So all I do is say thank you. Um, I don't, I don't try to psychoanalyze, you know, what, what that means. I, I just know that people like it, and we like to deliver it. And it's sort of been the great privilege of my many, many years in show-off business. 
And Jason Blum has... Uh, is that what he is? He is Laurie Strode from the 2018 movie. Yes! It's insane. It's incredible. I never had this kind of feeling. It's a combination of just knowing that David and, and the whole company, everybody involved, did such a great job and that there's such a huge anticipation for the film. It's great. It's a great feeling. So we're really excited about it. Everybody. Let's say you're in a hospital bed, you've got life-threatening injuries, you could die, and there's a serial killer on the loose. You can choose one person from the cast or crew to keep you safe. Who do you choose? To keep me safe? I would say Jamie Lee, absolutely. She's a boss mama. No, she was a great lady to work with, honestly. Great actress, but really a great person. Really cares about the people she works with. Yeah. Gives a lot of great energy to people. There he is. He don't scare me. <laughs> nice job, huh? Oh Very God. good. The fact that there's such a huge audience and there's an expectation for the film, that's a great feeling, you know, because we all know everybody did a good job, but David really delivered as a filmmaker. It's phenomenal. And it's like a freight train, you know, it just kicks off and it's uh, an hour and 46 minutes of just boom, you know, a lot of action. I think the change that happens in the story, everybody goes from being survivors or just victims of Myers to then deciding as a group that we're going to fight, you know, and I think that's what gives it its energy, especially as the movie opens and it propels the story forward, so it just kicks ass from there. You know, there's a lot of great performances, a lot of great people, and just great, uh, great group of people that are excited about this. It's been two years, you know, it's been a while. I just want them to have fun, you know what I mean? After these two years we've all been through, uh, it's just really exciting. You know, it's gonna be an audience, crowd-pleasing crowd film. Uh, so fans of this franchise, I think, will be very happy, and also new, new audiences too, hopefully. Because every actress wants to have her Annie Hall moment. Like every actress wants to, like, be her version of Annie Hall. And and since, uh, yeah, I never have done this before. I can't believe it. So I thought this would be the one. I know she's such a badass. She is like the OG final girl. She's so incredible. Um, I think Jamie Lee Curtis is one of the most amazing people I've ever met and that I've ever gotten to work with. And she is inspiring in every way I can imagine. Um, it was like a really big honor to be chosen for this role three years ago. <laughs> and to just keep making these movies has been such a joy. And I never thought I would say that about a horror movie. <laughs> Were you not a fan of horror films coming into that? I'm a really, I'm afraid. I'm a great audience member. Like I scream, I yell, I drop things, I jump. I, I'm, your, I'm your dream audience, so yes. Movies need to be seen in the theater. I don't care how big or small the movie. That's what we. That's what we do. Um, and so I'm just happy that theaters are opening back up. I'm happy that we're giving people this for Halloween this year. I feel like it is like the beginning of maybe us getting back to normalcy. And I feel like this movie is fun. It's a ride. It's wild. It is a horror movie. Like it gives you all the horror. Yeah. <laughs> All the gore, all the kills, it's so stinking scary. Yeah. Let's say you were in a hospital bed. You had life-threatening injuries. Uh -huh. Michael Myers is on the loose. Yes. You can choose one member of the cast or crew to keep you safe. Who do you choose? That's mean. Oh. I mean Jamie. But I love my kids. I mean, I love, you know, I loved Cameron. I love my daughter Allison. She's not keeping you safe. No. They just go right after it. Jamie, Jamie would keep me safe. Jamie. You look incredible. I'm Laurie Strode. I know. Okay, Laurie just, Strode. yes, from 2018. Laurie just want to make sure that everyone knows. There were a few people confused. Someone thought I was Chewbacca. No, that's not true. It feels great to be here with Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, and John Carpenter and you know who originated the the first movie which no one thought would turn anything to turn into anything and to be here uh, 40 x years later is uh, it's wild I mean it feels amazing I can't imagine what it feels like for them. We have uh, multi generations of Strodes and uh, and uh, and uh, I think there'll be a lot of future. Uh, we're setting up, setting up groundwork for a lot of future fighting of uh, Michael Myers. <laughs> if you were in a hospital bed and Mike Myers was on the loose, who would you want to protect you? It has to be a member of this cast and crew. Who would Who's I want? David Gordon Green. Why? Because he's a genius. He would, he would know how to outsmart Michael Myers. 
the DNA of the movie is very connected to Halloween. There are a bunch of characters in this movie that were in the original Halloween, so people who like the first movie or like the old movies will love this movie. But I also think tonally the movie feels different than all the other Halloween movies, and it even feels different than Halloween 2018. It feels uh, feels like David is kind of trying something new with the movie, and I think it works great, and that's why they'll like it. So this is my gal, it's made by Ben Armour. This is Evil Must Die Tonight because that's the theme of Halloween Kills. It's a blessing. That's, I mean, just to be named with Jamie Lee Curtis is huge. Everyone knows who Michael Myers is. Everyone knows who Hall what Halloween is. So it's just iconic. And just to be involved with this, it's amazing. I thank David and I thank everyone else for even bringing me back again. You're in a hospital bed. You got life-threatening injuries. You might die. You can have one person protect you from Michael Myers. Who is that one person in this cast or crew who you would choose? Jamie Lee Curtis. Why? <laughs> Laurie Strode is the only person that can go against Michael Myers. She's done it many times, so she can kick his behind, believe me. I have all my faith in Laurie, so heck yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. What it is, is about how women can kick ass. That's what it is about. So men, if they don't listen, it doesn't matter. We're still going to kick behind, especially in this movie. The last movie established, re-established Laurie and Michael and that good versus evil, evil dynamic. And here, it's we, we separate them, we pull it apart, we explore how fear has permeated through the entire community of Haddonfield and, and how they're each able to, to stir it up from their opposing position. We bring it back next year and it's the final confrontation between the two. These sets are really fun, and we have a great crew that knows how to have a good time making making scary movies. So we uh, we, we treat it like a family, take it very seriously, and um, and yeah, we let it loose. And we we want to make sure that this is a scary time at the movies, but want to make sure that there's a few laughs in there to to break the tension. And to see it big and beautiful and loud, uh, that's what the design's all about. And and to see a horror movie with a crowd, it's, it's, it's that collective identity that we have in these experiences that I think is really important to, uh, to the movie theater. You're in a hospital bed, you might die, Mike Myers is coming for you, you can get one person from the cast or crew to keep you safe, who do you choose? I'll, I'll bring Jamie Lee Curtis. Why is that? Capable of everything. Well that's the real thrill, it's just, um, you know, it's one of those legacy horror titles to be a part of that and to try to live up to the credibility that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill established in 1978. It's a challenge and you're writing difficult characters and you're trying to make it relevant to today's culture, um, but the fans have an appetite for it and, and I'm ready to feed them some more. Well they get to see a lot of Easter eggs, you know, first hand experience. Um, uh, and they get to see how they kind of added nods to the first movie and they kind of they they really created this really cool push and pull formula where they make you feel safe and then they pop out at you and you like scare you you know and they, they give you a nice tense thing and sometimes they wouldn't scare you so you, they lure you into false sense of security they just wrote it and they shot it really well and you guys are just in for a treat <laughs> literally I mean it's it's an honor <laughs> it, it's it's really cool to just see me and then see her on the same screen yeah. And I got to meet her too, so that's just even better. Listen, I'm a big fan of a goofy movie. Powerline was my favorite character growing up. Last year, I had the opportunity to bring Powerline to life. We did a whole eye-to-eye -eye live action rendition of it. So I didn't get a chance to show it out last year, only in the video. This year, I said, no, I'm stepping out with it for sure. Nice. Yeah. All right, you're in a hospital bed. You might die. Mike Myers is coming to kill you. You can get one person from this cast or crew to save you. Who do you choose? Jamie Lee Curtis. I, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. If there's one person in the world who Mike Myers actually behind the Terrible. actually behind the mask might be scared of, it's the one and only Jamie Lee Curtis. So absolutely Jamie Lee Curtis. The absolute terror that Michael Myers can just bring out of anybody. This is a character for decades who's just scared you no matter what. So to see him back, live action, 2021, the flames, the gore, whatever he has going on up here, we really don't know. But nonetheless, I'm excited to see it bring to life. The thought was, I have 10 minutes to grab a costume, and I, I walked into Trashy Laundry with my friend. It was the first thing hanging on the rack, and I said, after hooking 20 buttons in the back, I said, I don't have this much time to hook this many buttons. I'll just take this one. <laughs> and then I said, 
I, who's gonna undo this? My husband's gonna be so annoyed. <laughs> this is fine, I'll take it. <laughs> well, I joined this rank 40 something years ago when I did the original film, so I feel proud to be part of such an iconic film that represents strong women. And being from a family uh, uh, you know, of strong women, my mom was a strong woman, I come from a family of strong women. You know, I have four daughters, so it makes me very proud. And I'm just so excited to be a part of it and reprising my role of Lindsay again and, um, and doing what I love to do, my first love, which is acting. You know, being back acting again makes me so happy. And I know that for these past 11 years, everyone knows me from the Housewives, but the fact that I'm doing Halloween again and I have a Christmas movie coming out after this, I'm just, I'm just so happy. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm just thrilled right now. Oh my God. Well, everyone, I mean, who loves these kind of films, this genre is going to be terrified. I mean, Halloween Kills, it lives up to its name. These kills are next level. I mean, Michael Myers, my daughter, I took my 13-year-old for the first time because the first Halloween I didn't think was appropriate for my kids before. There was nudity and this and that. It, there's no nudity in this one. So I was like, you know what, I'll take Portia. She was like, why does he keep doing this? So it does not disappoint. Um, so I think people are going to be really excited. I think they're going to love seeing some of the original characters. They're going to love the story of the town coming together that has bonded through these years of being tormented by Michael Myers. And it's just, it's a thrill ride. And to be here tonight at this iconic theater, it's just so exciting. And to have the world kind of, kind of coming back to normal that we can have this premiere tonight is just beyond thrilling. What member of the cast or crew would you want to keep you safe? Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She's always got my back. I love it. She's got my back on screen and off. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's great. Uh, it was it was kind of sad it didn't get to go when it wanted to go, but God, this really built up all the enthusiasm and suspense, you know, even more. So. Thank God we're coming out of COVID now and people can go to the theaters and see it or go to Peacock and you know watch it uh, if they feel so inclined. I really appreciate it and I hope people give the, move, the theater a shot because I think you're going to have fun with a whole crowd of people screaming and yelling at the same time. It is a release, you know. You can, uh, it, you can just let it go and it's, while maybe we've seen too many people let it go in the wrong way, this way there's no, you know, there's no repercussions, you know, you could just have fun. Instead of screaming at the stewardess, you can scream at the screen. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, I think that's really good. Can you imagine, you know, you know, going through all this that we've gone through in the last 60s month and be able to just let go, you know, it's really a horror film does that more than any other uh, genre, I would think, even more than a comedy. So. Well, this is, I tried to recreate the original 1970, that's why it says Nick, 1978. This is me. This is my hair back then. <laughs> this is what I would do. Uh, there's a very famous shot of me uh, uh, slugging a, uh, a can of uh, Dr. Pepper. So I have that here. It's just a remembrance of, uh, of that wonderful year that we did this movie. And, uh, and also, I thought it would be a funny, uh, a funny gag <laughs> as a costume. It's amazing. I mean, what I don't know what else it's like. Maybe Star Wars or something like that. But for a low-budget, little independent film to have generated all this, it's uh, it's quite remarkable. And you got to give it to John and Deborah, and uh, all the creators. Uh, you know, Irwin E. LeBlanc, all those people that really started the thing. And then, but really give it to David Gordon Green and his crew, Blumhouse, because they. It's hard to do this. It's hard to, to re, uh, you know, reset a, a, a classic franchise. And I think they did it very well in 2018. I think this is a really good second one. And boy, I know what's going to happen at the end. Yo. I'm a reservoir dog. I'm Tim Roth. I got shot in the stomach. I want people to just see the depravity of Michael Myers, man. Like, I've seen the movie, it is one of my favorite horror films of all time. This Halloween Kills is one of the best. Wow. It's tremendous, because it's, Michael Myers is upset. They just burned his, they just burned him down in the house. Then somebody came and saved him. So he's on a warpath now. 
They should let the house burn. They didn't know any better. So it's like, no, it's like, okay, it's a house burning. Now let's go save this person. The next thing you know is Michael Myers. And now he's mad at everybody. So everybody has to pay. I love it, and you're Jamie Lee Curtis. I love her. She's the best in the world. And look how beautiful she is. I love Jamie. I love working with her. Seriously, it's my second movie, second time around with her, man. She is tremendous. She is the queen of screen. And I'm so blessed to be in her presence and to be in two movies with her. To finally unleash Michael Myers after waiting a year for this, uh, it's, it's unreal. So uh, thrilled to be here, thrilled to set Michael Myers free. Thrilled to have three strong Strode women fighting Michael Myers. Uh, that, that's what this is all about. Just, just this pure carnage that we're about to see. Well, I think we're adding two more powerful women to this, right? I mean, three times the fun with the, the ladies here. Uh, and, and also the town of Haddonfield, which has been kind of an overlooked element to this film franchise. You know, we've, we've concentrated on Laura, we've concentrated on some of the characters, but what is the, the effect of Michael Myers on the town? And that's what we're going to see here tonight. So I think we're really excited to see that. Having seen it several times, I know what's coming, so I'm going to be looking out for, I'm going to be like two seconds ahead of everybody for when they jump. And I want to see if where I think they should jump, they are jumping. So that's, that's what I'm going to be looking forward to. You're in a hospital bed, you might die, Mike Myers is coming for you. One person from the cast and crew can keep you safe. Who is it? David Gordon Green. Why? Guy is just a creative mrf -er. uh, <laughs> And I think he'd find a way out. We had a wonderful time in Wilmington, North Carolina. I love David, I love Camilla, I love Kyle. I love Jamie, I've known Jamie forever, and our kids went to school together. So it's just a, it's a fun reunion for me, and of course I'm excited to see the movie. It's been such an exciting franchise and the fans are so devoted. It was a surprise to me because people said, well, how did you get that part? How did you get Halloween? John Carpenter, nobody knew who John was. It was a female, Deborah Hill was the producer who became a good friend. We did a lot of environmental work together after the film. And I thought, you know, you're, as a young actor, you take a job having no idea that this is the one thing in your entire career that is going to make you famous in, in a, a niche. My daughter is very funny because going into restaurants, she'll say, Mom, the waiter's coming over. He spotted you. And I see a 25-year-old who wasn't even born when I did Halloween. And eventually they come over and go, Oh, Miss Stevens, would you sign this? I've been watching Halloween, and I'm going, since you were five? No, not that. But anyway, it was a great experience. It was fun. David's a wonderful director. The cast, uh, the crew was extraordinary, very much like a family. I think there's going to be a, a little bittersweet because the franchise is coming to a finale soon enough. See, they're crying already. <laughs> um, I, I, there's such anticipation for it and I think everyone through COVID has missed going to the movies. They had hoped to see it last year so I think it's just a celebration of maybe if everyone gets vaccinated and wears masks we might move out of this so we can all go to the movies all the time. I know it's the wait was the hardest part, right? Like the song says, and uh, it's it's a thrill. I mean, we we've started working on this in 2018, right before the the first one was released, and it's been a long journey, a long journey to get here, and uh, and it's just a thrill. The wait was tough, and knowing we had something. I mean, I saw a finished cut of this movie a year ago, and knowing we had something we loved and we were excited about made it tough, but I'm just glad to be here tonight. Dude, you are made of steel. That woman screamed, you didn't even flinch. What, what does anything scare you? Oh, not anymore. Not after working with, with these crazy people and this this crazy character. And um, it was a blast. You know, for me, it was also working with my longtime friend, David Gordon Green, who I've known for 15 years. And this is our first chance to do something together. And, and that really made it even more special to me and to be a part of this this Blumhouse family uh, has been a joy.
I am uh, I am bearded giant exorcist girl, I think. This is my partner, Ember Zombie and Fitch over here. Um, but uh, we are, yeah, so I just thought, you know what? We're doing The Exorcist next. I think I thought I'd come out and do a little cross promotion. You're in a hospital bed. You have life-threatening injuries. You might die. Michael Myers is on the loose. You can choose one person in the casting crew to keep you safe. Who do you choose? Jason Blum, because he knows everybody, and he will find a way to get the right person there immediately. He'll send a car for them, and they'll come, and they will rescue us in style. That's what you need. Honestly, this movie to me is about the, the reality of evil and the cost of violence. And that may sound crazy from a movie about a bunch of folks getting killed in creative ways, but for me, and I think for all of us, there's something deeper here we're trying to say too. To face up to um, the cost of violence in the sense that I think in a lot of slasher movies, we get the, the fake catharsis of of a gun to the head or a knife in the throat or whatever, and we move quickly past it. And I think in this film, we try to linger on that a little bit and say, move past that kind of fake catharsis and actually make people sit with the aftermath of violence and actually the cost to those people around and people that have to witness that. And um, just a way to bring a little bit, hopefully a little more groundedness to a film like this and a little more um, truth to it. Hey, it's Lisa here with more on horror. The Exorcist was the first horror film to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. Now, the horror genre has never gotten much love from the Academy, though there still seems to be a bias against scary movies during awards season. The Exorcist earned 10 Oscar nominations in 1974, including Best Supporting Actress nod for Linda Blair, who was just 15 years old at the time. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one in the description below.